I'm Dr. John Hovanesian. Conjunctival cholesis is a common and frustrating eye problem that causes discomfort and pain. It often occurs in people who also have dry eye, but it's important for doctors to recognize that this is a separate condition that must be recognized and treated in order for patients to be comfortable. Chalasia, or cholesis, refers to relaxation of muscles or tissue. Most physicians are familiar with this term because of its use in achalasia of the esophagus, which causes difficulty swallowing. In the eye condition, the cholasis refers to redundancy of the tissue that lines the eye surface, called conjunctiva. We believe this is caused by an absence of tenon's fascia, the microscopic connective tissue that holds the conjunctival mucous membranes to the eyeball. In the absence of this tenon's fascia, the conjunctiva becomes loose and redundant. The ICD-9 code for this condition is 372.81. People with conjunctival cholasis have pain, and it's primarily this pain that tells us a patient has more than just dry eye. In dry eye alone, pain is rarely present. The pain of conjunctival cholasis, on the other hand, is not a general ache, and the patient can typically point with a finger to the affected area of the eye. It feels like I have an eyelash in my eye, and it's so irritable that it's driving me crazy because we looked, I used eye wash, I used everything that I could, and um, it, nothing helped. Do you feel it when you blink? Y yes. Where do you feel I it? I feel like it's in the corner of my eye, right up here. In its typical form, this pain also occurs with movement or blinking of the eye. The same pain can be reproduced by the doctor putting gentle pressure on the eyelid externally with a finger, just in the affected area. Because conjunctival cholasis frequently occurs in people with dry eye, it's appropriate to look for associated signs of dry eye. Finally, a history of previous eye surgery or severe swelling of the eye from an inflammatory episode can give us a clue as to the presence of conjunctival cholasis. Exam of the eye in conjunctival cholasis shows redundancy of the conjunctiva at the edge of the lower lid most typically on the temporal side. Naturally, this redundancy occurs in some people who have no eye pain. A useful test to identify conjunctival cholasis as the cause of pain is to put your thumb on the skin of the lower eyelid just below the eyelashes and press gently while the patient looks up and down. Do you feel it when I do this? Yes, I do. Okay. You feel it right in there. And look up and down, and do you feel it? Again? Yes, I do. You do. Okay, look down and up and down. And that, that's that same pain? Yes. Okay. Of course, this needs to be done when there are no other anesthetic eye drops in the eye. This maneuver will often reproduce the characteristic pain of conjunctival cholasis. Risk factors for conjunctival cholasis include age over 50, dry eye history, prior eye surgery as well, particularly where there is a history of a peribulbar or a retrobulbar anesthetic that was used. Some have theorized that the use of peribulbar or retrobulbar anesthetic causes conjunctival swelling or chemosis, and this may lead to loosening of the tethering tenons fascia between the eyeball and the conjunctiva. In a one-year review of patients who were treated surgically for conjunctival cholasis at our practice, we found eight patients. All of them had age greater than 50 and had a history of prior eye surgery, including six with cataract surgery, one with LASIK, and one with blepharoplasty eyelid surgery. All had previously been diagnosed with just severe dry eye. All underwent the same procedure described here with the use of conjunctival excision and amniotic membrane placement, and all had complete resolution of symptoms following surgery. We typically perform surgery with a peribulbar anesthetic using bupivacaine to give many hours of comfort. The surgical approach includes first identifying the areas of loose conjunctiva, and this can be done with a Q-tip on the ocular surface tissue to identify where the areas of most extensive relaxation of conjunctiva are. The second step is to excise a small strip of conjunctiva, sometimes as little as one or two millimeters, to allow relaxation of the loose tissue away from the cornea. It's important to leave about one millimeter of healthy conjunctiva adjacent to the cornea so as not to disturb the limbal stem cells. Next. Dehydrated human amniotic membrane is cut to the shape of the conjunctival defect, oversizing by one or two millimeters on all sides except the corneal side. We use dehydrated amniotic membrane because of the ease of cutting with the packaging and the ease of application directly onto the eye in its dry state. Vibrant tissue adhesive is next applied in two layers. The first is fibrinogen and the second is thrombin. Immediately after applying the second adhesive component, the thrombin, the amniotic membrane graft is then applied to the eye in its dry state. 
The membrane can then be placed underneath the surrounding conjunctiva by one or two millimeters to help secure it. Tucking in the membrane is a fairly easy task in most areas. Simply lifting the conjunctiva around the amniotic membrane allows it to fall into place. And closer to the limbus, it's often necessary to tuck in the amnion into the subconjunctival potential space. After surgery, eyes are patched and shielded overnight, and patients begin prednisolone, acetate, and fluoroquinolone antibiotics, along with a topical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drop beginning the day after surgery. They're seen back in the office about one week later. These pre- and post-operative photographs show the appearance of the eye before and one month following the procedure. Of note, the ocular surface of the limbus appears much less inflamed and is completely covered with surface epithelium. At this stage, the patient is completely free of pain symptoms. This patient, who had conjunctival cholesis 360 degrees around the cornea, had a complete excision of a strip of 2 millimeters of conjunctiva around the globe. Strips of amniotic membrane were applied to the surface. At the time of this photograph, two weeks after surgery, he is completely pain-free, and already the eye appears much less inflamed. We encourage our colleagues to consider conjunctival cholesis in patients who have been previously diagnosed with unremitting dry eye that is associated with pain. Naturally, making every effort with non-surgical therapy first is an appropriate first step in this condition, but when conservative treatment fails, we have had very good success using the described technique. More information about this procedure and other techniques of eye surface surgery can be found at amtsurgery.com. Thank you.